Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett, see, it says the ramble, that's what it is, and we go until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States of America, we do go to visit with Larry Bubbles yeah, sure. Brown. Hello. To, uh... We've been, uh, we've been tr- trying to, uh, this about ballot central. Yeah, yeah we've We're been counting tr- votes as we speak. Yeah, ballot central. Yeah, you see now he, uh, we record this. Uh, we're recording this on a Thursday. It's going to be on on a Friday. By Friday, we may have a president of the United States, or in the case of Donald Trump, we won't have a president of the United States. Well, uh, I think I don't think it's going to last as long as the Gore Bush debacle, which was five weeks. So yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this is. Uh, I don't think we've ever had anything like this, but you know, this is also toned by the uh, by the coronavirus too. You know, because we all went out and we voted early, or we voted uh, absentee, or we voted, you know, whatever. And so they're having to calculate these numbers from different areas and different uh, modalities, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, it it becomes more confusing. It becomes more of a problem. And they they want you know I honestly believe nobody's out to cheat anybody. These states just want to make sure they come up with the most accurate count possible. Um, and uh, I think they're doing a splendid job of it. But you know, as I say, th- we're playing this on Friday. This is Thursday. By Friday, this might not be a mess anymore. It right, might be right. re- completely resolved. Or not resolved at all. So, yeah. It's, and uh, yeah. For a, for a while, there was actually a possibility that it could have ended up in an electoral tie, two sixty nine votes apiece, which the, would have been interesting. There's a one out of like fifteen chance that it could. Yeah. And then you know what happens. It goes to the uh, Congress. It goes to Congress, but it goes to the, it doesn't go to this Congress. It goes to the newly elected Congress, which will still have a majority. Yeah, but that would be, certainly would be interesting. That happened in uh, 1876. Hmm. Really? Did you look it up? I've heard about this. Uh, Gore Vidal wrote a book called 1876 years ago. It's, uh, it got so screwed up, it went to the Congress, and then I think that ended up in another tie. Then they started making up rules as they went along, and they, they, they came up with a committee, and that went by party lines, and I think... Hayes won eight votes to seven, so he became president. And uh... well, what's interesting is, okay, what's interesting is that the um, current vote, at least this is as of Thursday when we're recording this, like one o'clock. Biden has almost four million votes more than uh, than Donald Trump. When are we going to get rid of this stupid electoral college system? I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, thought, I thought it was only like a, I thought it was less than Hillary had like three million. I thought it was less than that. Oh no, 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 no! The popular vote right now. Let me see here. Now remember, folks, we're yeah. recording this on uh, on on Thursday, okay? But if I go and I try and find the uh, uh, the, the results, let's see if we have a number here. Um, this was according to Politico. Uh, do they have a number? They have a number. They have a number. Uh, no. Uh, this is still. Uh, I, I don't have a. Uh, I don't have the, the just the presidential numbers. But it it you know it it's somewhere about a four million difference, maybe three point wow, five. Weird. Yeah. So I mean, it, it with Hillary, it was three million. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I think Gore Bush, I think maybe Gore came out with more popular votes. Gore had like a quarter million more. Yeah. Yeah. So folks, isn't it time we did away with this electoral college system? It makes no sense whatsoever. Well, the states can actually 
step in and do it on their own. They can, uh, like some, if the state wanted to, they can apportion the uh, their electoral votes by district. Yeah, and they do that in Maine and Kansas. Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska. Nebraska. Uh, but what some states have done is they said that they would give all their electoral votes to what whoever won the popular vote. In the in the country, mm-hmm. that, they, yeah. If, if every state did that, we would be able to just do away with the electoral college without, you know, getting a an amendment to do away with it or whatever, you know. And the other thing that's shocking about the electoral college, they get, you get the electors from each state, and they're they're pledged to vote for who wins that state, but they're guys have done it several times they change their mind they vote for somebody else so in a really close election that could throw something you know? yeah yeah but i mean it, it's just been a real clusterfuck this time and and it's because of the coronavirus i mean we have had people well more people pre-voted than at any time in the history of the united states we had almost 100 million people vote before the election um in early voting i know i early voted uh, and Marjorie early voted, and a lot of people we know did. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, those early votes uh, get counted. When do they get counted? I think they get counted second or something. I don't know. Well, Florida counted theirs first. That's why they got done so quickly, and some states don't count till that day. So. Yeah. So anyway, and in Pennsylvania, they, they didn't wait till the polls closed down, you know. A lot of states were... Uh, adding up the votes, the early votes early, and then putting them somewhere where nobody could have access to them. Nobody would know what the final count was, but they had the final count that they could just release at that point. Uh, You know, because of COVID, all the rules have been written differently, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really strange. It's gotten weird. It's, um, it's a whole new ball game as it were. So what the hell? (laughs) <laughs> what the hell? This is, you know, it's ridiculous. Uh, but uh, um, um, how you how, how you doing? How are you feeling? Are you there? Oh, boy. We lost him. Okay. We lost him. I have to call him back here. Hey. I don't know what happened. I lost. It well, was going along swimmingly for a while. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, I looked up at my uh, at my Skype, which we use Skype for this, and and it just said, uh, oh, "Well, how how would you rate this call?" And I'm going, "Wait a minute, I don't get that <laughs> that often." Well, I would rate this call shitty now. <laughs> uh, but how has Larry Bubbles Brown been doing? You told me I've been I've been exhausted. I've been just today. I am like. I'm bouncing into walls. I'm so tired. Tired, the eyes burn, and you got me thinking. Maybe it's maybe it's not allergies. Maybe it's mold. Well, it probably is mold because this time of year you're not really getting pollen problems. You know, things are not in yeah. bloom. Uh, and uh, uh, Marjorie went to her allergist and said she's been just itching and sneezing, and he says mold. You know, he says it's a very heavy mold season. So how do we treat that? Uh, I guess you don't. I guess you could get, I think, a dehumidifier might help. Or is it a humidifier that would help? I can't remember which. What if you buy a humidifier? A humidifier, like moisture would bring in the mold, so it would be a dehumidifier. A dehumidifier, yeah. yeah. What happens if you bought a dehumidifier and a humidifier? <laughs> You have a thunderstorm, and, and you put them in, you put them in the same room. I mean, is there a thunderstorm in the middle of your bedroom yeah. or something? <laughs> Didn't they say that you are you were, you know, about the Houston Astrodome that when yeah. they first opened that they started to have little like rain showers in there? Really? Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, they had to do something with the uh, cooling system because of that. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, so it started raining. Houston, I know some of the lizards. Just sounds like such a humid hellhole. Yeah, so I mean, well, I mean, it would, must mean that they could have a rain day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> at the Houston Astrodome, <laughs> the, rain, the dome the was rained out. 
<laughs> well, the dome was, uh, I am I'm familiar with it because uh, when I went there, it had already been built. And they were using it, but they had a problem. And the problem was they had these windows in the ceiling uh, of the dome that allowed light to come through to grow the grass, right? Yeah. The only problem with it was is that it was like this grid, and when a ball flew high and they tried to see where the ball was, they couldn't see it. Right, they lost the ball, and then sometimes you get hit in the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had to solve that problem by painting over the top of the Astrodome. So the, the, that wouldn't be a problem. The only problem with that was the grass started dying. And there was no way to grow grass without sunlight. So what was their solution, Larry? Man always has a solution, right? They came up with AstroTurf. You're absolutely correct. And uh, I am familiar with that because I used to know Deanie Hoffines, who was Roy Hoffines, Judge Roy Hoffines' daughter, and he's the guy who built the dome. And they had a, a, a news conference where they brought all the news people down, and I was considered kind of that because I had a radio show, to see the, what their solution was. And they showed us what it was, and they had put it down, and it was made by Monsanto, and it was called AstroTurf, named after the Astrodome. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this was their solution. And they would have different cleats for the uh, for the players so that they could play on this surface. And that was their that was their solution to the problem. And I was one of the first people ever to step on astroturf. <laughs> um, but that's how they solved the problem. Uh, but uh, you know, they never thought for a moment that being able to have you know windows on top of the dome was going to cause any kind of problem to play. And yet when the ball went up and it hit these girders and the sun was coming through, they couldn't see where the ball was. So that's how they solved their problem. Yes, and, and then uh, what uh, cult movie was filmed in the Astrodome? Brewster. Brewster McCloud. Brewster McCloud, right. Yeah. Starring the young Bud Court. Yes, yes, a name that will, uh, obviously a name we won't forget because uh, he became such a big star. <laughs> well, yeah, he he's one of those guys, I think he was like 20 or 21, and had two big movies. And yeah, he had that the, Harold and Maude and, uh, yeah, yeah. and Brewster's Million, and then yeah. after that you never heard of Bud Court again. Wow. In fact, he's probably still alive somewhere saying, I was in Brewster's Million. <laughs> I think that was an Altman film. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely was. Uh, and I think I was there when they were filming it. Actually, I don't know what year that was, but I seem to remember that I that they were they were filming it in in Houston at the time. Okay. But uh, you know, I mean, it's amazing that human beings do come up with solutions to problems. Uh, and uh, it, it, the, it, what I'm finding is kind of interesting is all the solutions we've come up with where um, um, COVID is concerned, you know. I mean, people using Zoom. They had Zoom Halloween parties this year, and everybody would show up on Zoom wearing their costume. Of course, I'm saying Zoom to a guy who doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> uh, I know. I know there are comics that do Zoom shows, and they say they really suck. So. Yeah, well, no, you, you, you know. I mean, I do my show on Zoom, but it's a discussion show, and it works perfectly. But works you know. for that. But for a, like comedy or something, you need a live audience. Yeah, I used to use uh, Skype a lot, and uh, now we don't use Skype at all. I mean, I don't think anybody uses Skype at all. I use it with you because that's the only way I can. Put you on the air through Skype. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that's an internet. The man always comes up with a solution, right? Man always comes up with a solution. Uh, but um, um, you know, I mean, we. It, it, uh, I I've given up on you when it comes to technology. I'm not even going to try and convince you anymore. <laughs> I know. You're the no, only what? person I have on this show now that we can't see. Okay. <laughs> Well, in this, in my case, that's probably a plus. 
Well, no, I mean, you know, I mean, I even, you know, I'm, uh, well, I'll tell you about it next time. Uh, but I'm, we'll, we'll get to something else next time on, okay. this, on this technology thing and how we're using it. Hey, we've run out of time. Do you realize that? Yeah, you're the tech guy. I'm the Luddite. So. Yeah, uh, and uh, and I'm getting more the Luddite, and you're going to suddenly become more the tech guy. You know, who knows? <laughs> anyway, thank you, Larry. Good talking well, to you. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Absolutely. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, and there he was, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive. Uh, oh, wait a minute, i got to do this. i got to turn on the lights here. Hold on. Hey, come on. All right. There we go. Now i got my lights on. Okay. All righty. God, nothing was working right. I was trying to start. Uh, I was trying to start this right, and then it wouldn't uh, wouldn't start. Well, that started on time. But how about this? Oh, well, anyway, nothing was working right. Ah, it's all technical, and it all breaks down when you get a chance. It breaks down. Anyway, here we go. Uh, we're gonna uh, go uh, bring in our Zoom panel here, our citizen panel. Why should I call it a Zoom panel when I made up the name Citizen Panel and that was perfect? Okay, look who we got here already. We got uh, we got uh, uh, Jeff and uh, we got me, and we got uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charles. That's me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed what you've been writing here. Uh, uh, Jack was worried about you last night. Mike? Yeah, oh. Mike Allen. Well, Mike Allen wasn't he? He wasn't on last night. No, it's the first time in, like, months. <laughs> really? Well, you know, last time he didn't show up, he didn't show up for months and months and months and months and months. Yeah, because he's in a hospital or something. That's why Jack was worried. Well, you know, if you listen to the guy, and I, I'm not trying to put him down by saying this, uh, hello, Richard Braun. How are you this evening? Hi. Um, okay. Just get first you. time, long time. First time, long time. No, why, why first time in a long time. In a, was... in a long time. Okay. Because I seem to remember the name. Yeah, just you know, uh, put the put the camera down somewhere and uh, settle down and enjoy the program and join in whenever you want to. Uh, Richard, and we'll get to you and ask you about a little bit about yourself okay. uh, sure. in a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I, the thing is about about uh, Mike Allen is he sounds so sick all the time uh, <laughs> that if he is uh, not there, you think he died. And it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable thing to think because he has like this cancerous laugh, you know, and he just, just is, he's, it doesn't sound like the epitome of great health. I'm not in great health. I feel t like crap lately, but uh, it's all this indoors all the time, indoors. How yep. you doing? Where are you, where are you, Richard? Hey, Alex. Where are you? Located? Sorry about Ronnie's passing. No, that's okay. You don't have to hold the mic up to your mouth. Be, uh, yeah, yeah. I get complaints at work uh, that they can't hear me. Oh, oh, no, if you can hear fine. me, that's great. You're fine. You're fine. You're just fine that way. Yes, <laughs> thank you about Ronnie. Uh, where, where, are you, where are you calling from, uh, Richard? I'm back in New York. I was in uh, Paris last time I called. Oh, really? I called a couple of times, oh, I think. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, I guess you came back from Paris because there's less COVID here, huh? I left. I left just in time. Uh, last two weeks, I was working from home, and uh, it was hard getting the flight out. But wow. it was uh, just because they cut back from eight flights a day to one every other day, oh. and uh, and even that flight was hardly even uh, filled. But uh, yeah, it, it, I'd rather be holed up at home yeah. here in New York than holed up in Paris and say, "Jeez." Why am I not outside? So you're in New York, New York City? I'm in New York, yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi from Harlem. You know. Neighbors. Uh, neighbors, where are you? Staten Island. Staten Island, yeah. <laughs> but I grew up in Stuyvesant Town. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. I, I grew up in San Anselmo, California, but that's another story altogether. Mm. Uh well, here it is. Uh, another 24 hours has gone by, and I'm getting tired of seeing the same two numbers up there on MSNBC. 
yeah. of, uh, what is it, uh, uh, 153? 153, and what's the other one, 117, uh, 217? Uh, take it, take it, you can't take that anywhere. And 196 and, or 214. No, no, it's, it's one, it's, uh, uh, Trump's got like 217 or something like that. Yeah. And they just sits there and sits there, and they go, "Well, we can't make a call yet." Two fifty three. What? What? Two fifty three. Yeah. Two fifty three. Yeah. Uh, and it's two fourteen. It's not. Somebody says it's, yeah. it's two fourteen, not two thirteen anymore. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where where do you pick up the extra vote? I, th I think that's Maine. been Alaska. In Maine. 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 Um, oh, Maine. He got that one in district in Maine that went Republican. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I bet they were having a big party over that one at the White House. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one that Biden got in Nebraska is what made it uh, possible for him, you know, made it a lot harder for it to be a top. Right. Oh, OK. Good. Good. The problem long. is Biden's term is now over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sure that's what Trump believes. <laughs> yeah. 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 The shame there yeah. is that. Biden needs this time to get his team together, who he's going to be, sec who's going to have Secretary of State, and Secretary of Treasury, and then they hire people under them and they get their ideas ready to go. And he's losing all that time. Yeah, but I think, he's, I think that he's only, Trump won't be cooperative. Yeah, well, I mean, look, <laughs> that that's a, a, a known quantity. You know that he is not going to invite Biden to the White House for that sit down meeting like uh, like uh, Obama did. Okay, I'm not talking about the yeah. ceremonial part. I'm no, no, about, but I'm you saying know, integrating. Oh, you know, they're, they're the not going to. They're not going to talk to the incoming administration. Transition. Yeah, nothing but to say. But, but but there's one laugh that Biden's got <laughs> over Trump. He knows it all already because he yeah. was there for eight years. Yeah. You know, he knows yeah. where you where you find the extra roll the of bathroom. toilet paper when it runs out in the restroom. You know. <laughs> and Biden he knows, knows he's that. won, even though it's not official yet. He knows he's won. Uh, and but does does Trump know he's lost? That's the question. Trump will never admit it. See, I mean, oh, if he were yeah. decent at this point, he would look at the landscape, say, "There's no way I'm going to win this one, so I will concede." And he can concede, and if it turns out he wins, he doesn't have to leave. He just conceded as a matter of form because it looked like you know whatever. Yes, Richard. Yeah. He's always one for great form. <laughs> no, who, um, who do you think he should pick for Secretary of State? How Susan about Obama? Rice. As, how about Obama? Uh, well, Susan Rice. Yeah, Maybe. Susan Rice would be good, but I don't think Obama wants anything. He he was president. He did his duty. He did his time. Uh, he's probably thankful the COVID didn't break on his watch. You know. Mm. Uh, he would have handled it. He would have handled it, or much better, you know. Um, but the, the point is that I don't think he wants anything like that, um, you know. Mm. Um, but I think trying to figure out who's going to be Secretary of State and who's going to be Secretary of Commerce and things like that is, is the same as measuring the drapes, you know. Uh, mm. And uh, that's, that's what I think. I think he's doing that already. I mean, I think he knows sure. who he wants as his you know, ambassador to the UN and secretary of state. And yeah, it's going to be jockeying. He, you know. No, he's probably already contacted the people, you know. And um, I think it was, was it McConnell who said uh, he'll have no trouble getting a cabinet. What he was indicating was if he wants somebody on his cabinet, we'll approve it. That was nice McConnell of McConnell. McConnell didn't say that. Yes, he did. He said he's going to have to be a, a centrist Democrat. That's the only way he's ever going to get anybody. No, no, he said he's not going to go along with Biden. No, but he was talking about his cabinet and, and approving a cabinet for him. That he doesn't well, have to worry yeah, about that. What, 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 Richard? Not the Supreme Court. That's another story. No, that's we haven't even got a slot yet. We haven't even, well, we haven't got openings yet. But we will, <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm sure that Biden will... Well, what he says he's going to do about the Supreme Court is he's going to get a bunch of jurists and a bunch of lawyers and people who know this sort of thing, and he is going to uh, uh, ask them what they think he should do about the Supreme Court. And if he says we should 
create some vacancies by adding a few more, he says, then I will do it. But I'm going to let some other group of people decide whether it's the right thing to do and the constitutional thing to do. There's a lot of technical things they have to do and make sure that they have an, enough staff that is judges uh, yeah. to handle the caseload. Apparently, even you know the Supreme Court might be able to use more or they might be able to, uh, or they could even change the... Um, like retirement age or mm. or make it a 16 year term uh, limit. Yeah, we've got, we've got to consider a Those lot are of ideas. Things. Yeah. Uh, Charlie. I guarantee you McConnell's not going to let them add any more Supreme Court seats. It takes the, the Senate has to approve of it. And if he keeps the majority, he's never going to approve any additional Supreme Court justices. You know, we might not, we might, the, the Democrats might just take the Senate. By Georgia. one. Yeah, because Georgia has two vacancies. In the act of women? Yeah, yes, Robert. I I think we should propose a uh, a little pool here. How many, under over or under, how many billions of dollars do you think the Georgia runoffs are going to cost oh. in the long run? There are going to be billions floating into the state of Georgia for those runoffs. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. I'd uh, like to see Ossoff and um, uh, the other fella go to Republican strongholds and try to convert those people. You can always have Democrats push Democrats out to polls, but if you can convince them, look, I'm a better guy than Purdue. You know, well, you this know, guy's he, a crook. He, yeah. And let's get Bloomberg on the case with a credit card in hand. Yeah. yeah, he he did it in Florida, but it didn't make and it, it didn't, didn't, didn't well, it probably helped, but it didn't get us the the state. But you know, a lot of these states, even though like your state, Charlie, is still a red state, but it's not red red. It's turning purple. Yeah, you know, uh, and that's Texas. Um, I mm. think what the Democrats have to do and what they haven't done is they should create start doing an education process, a real heavy education process with the Republicans, the Republican vo voters, and say, we're not socialists. Here's what a socialist is. Here's what we are. Yes, we're not conservatives, but we're not socialists. Uh, I mean, I wish we could say we're socialists because I don't think there's anything wrong with being a socialist. Hell, I'm a socialist, you know. Uh, and, and I don't see anything wrong with it, but I think we have to educate people not to be afraid of it. Marjorie, one of her best friends, lives in Philadelphia, and she's a Trumper. And she says, because Biden's a, you know, Biden's a, she bought it all. Biden's yeah. a socialist. Uh, you know, uh, Biden's going to do this. Biden's going to do that. And the mm -hmm. fact is, Biden is just this fairly decent guy who could, if you give them half a chance, bring the whole country together and everybody on the same page, you know? But no. well, here again, mm -hmm. here, here again, mm -hmm. he who controls the messaging mm -hmm. controls the show. And the Republicans, I have to admit, have done a better job of defining the Democrats than the other way around. Well, we have never sat around defining the conservatives. That's right. the problem. You know, they've sat there. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we have never gone around defining them, and we really should. You know? He didn't run against Biden. He ran against AOC. You and hear Bernie it at Sanders and, yeah. Bernie Sanders, Nancy Pelosi, and there's always this kind of implied image of the crack whore in Newark with six kids who's collecting welfare. It's mm -hmm. always been that image. Well, I know her. Ooh, I know her. But <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah. I, I came on yeah. to her once because I figured I she dated was dated her in high school. Yeah, yeah right. I dated her yeah. in high school. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, um, I just think if we do something in the next four years, it should be a re-education process of the American public. So they don't... They don't look at the difference in the same way. I mean, I, I can say that I look upon Republicans, but the, the, the extreme right, as being very selfish, 
and very dogmatic. I mean, and here we have a guy who was, I mean, he came very close to being a dictator. He was trying his best to be, that's his biggest failure. He didn't become the dictator he wanted to be, you know? And I, I think it's time that, um, you know, we started, uh, we started, we should try to re-educate people. And well, he can, he, I hmm? think it could go a long way if he could get the police to say, you know, we do better with regulated guns, not necessarily taking people, taking guns away. Mm -hmm. Okay. But regulated guns. So we know who committed the crime or make sure that people are handling them responsibly. Mm -hmm. And um, also diminishing the, the responsibility of police from doing uh, handling social problems mm -hmm. Or cats and trees, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, here's how I feel about guns. Um, if I if I gave a kid a toy, and he misused it, what do I what would I do? I would take it away from him. Yeah. So you can't play with that because you don't know how to play with it responsibly. Well, that's the way I feel about guns. I think America has proved they don't know how to responsibly use guns, yeah. and that's why I'm for very heavy gun regulation because. <laughs> It's, it's not that I don't believe you should have, should have the right to have a gun, but we've allowed you to have the right to have a gun, and guess what you've done? You've fucked that up. Same thing with a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, pro the problem is the borderline between, you know, acting responsibly and, you know, and acting irresponsibly, you, you don't know when the guy crosses the line mm -hmm. and says, hey, I'm going to take, take care of my grievance Right. You know, yeah, right. Yeah, right. So yeah. he hasn't crossed the line yet until he. Well, until I mean, he does. we just, too many people get killed by guns every year in this country. I yeah. mean, it's just, you don't that's, know how to use them that, responsibly. That, that, we'll, that take, we'll take them away from you. Uh, boy, it's a quiet night tonight. Where is everybody? Oh, I'll just keep going and hope that some people do call us. Uh, the, um, uh, I, I just, you know, I just think that. Um, uh, I want to see this thing resolved. I want them to call the election for Biden and let's get on with our lives, okay? Now, I don't care if that guy in the White House doesn't believe that he's, you know, um, that he, he's going to leave, you know. It's, I, think it was, I think it was Biden today who said, well, you know, if anybody doesn't want to leave, uh, uh, we have ways, laws uh, against trespassing. <laughs> yep. we know how to get rid That's of a good one. We know how to get rid of trespassers. That's what he said. In the White House. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm, I, he would be a trespasser. I mean, yep. it, do you think he's just going to get up and leave? And <laughs> do you think he's. Don't gonna, care. Does he have a security deposit? <laughs> <laughs> Because if he does, I don't care. We'll get him out one way or the other. As long well, if he as doesn't, talking. I'm afraid that he's going to trash the place. That's been done before, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It has been done before. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, they haven't. I think. I think when Bush left, I think they trashed the White House. Oh, did they mm -hmm. really? Hold on a second, yeah. folks. I got to go get my. It wasn't him specifically, uh, but it no, was. No, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cough drop here because I'm having a little bit of a tickle in my throat. No, I'm sure Bush. That's also didn't have the way you do uh, sound effects of fire. Oh, that, that's good. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, let me yeah. uh, let me just put my earphones back on again. So you say Bush trashed the place? Not Bush it's personally. People. His, his people, his minions. Wait a minute. I do remember there was somebody. W. Yes, I think. I think it was W. Was it W? George W. It was the Clintons took the W's off the typewriters yes, or something. Yes, they took the W's what, off the what's typewriters. What's a typewriter? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That I guess that was one way of doing it, you know. But I wonder if Trump's going to trash the White House. Oh, uh, you he's know, tra he's but trashing he's America at the, at he, the He's same trashed time. it already, but in a different way. Um, oh, Mike Allen's on the uh, on the chat. So yeah. I guess Mike, you're alive, huh, Mike? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. I guess maybe everybody. The reason we're not getting a lot of calls is people are waiting for uh, Biden to talk. He's supposed to show up and speak. 
he, he was when I came on. He was speaking? Yes. Oh, okay. And what was he I saying? Anything? I didn't hear. Oh. Okay. I was listening to you. They say he's well, been unusually short and sweet. Be calm. Well, he's been short and sweet, and I think he is. Did he say be calm? He did earlier today. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, he's been very. Uh, oh, uh, uh, by the way, uh, Donald Trump tonight did a tweet saying, uh, "Joe Biden better not uh, declare victory." You know, uh, really? Yeah. He can do anything he goddamn pleases. He's the next president of the United States. <laughs> Sure. Well, he, he declares was, Biden no. is guilty of crimes. Did you? The see? laws don't apply to Trump. Trump yeah. can declare victory all he wants, but Biden better not do it. Yeah. But, but, what got me tonight is about seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, I forget if it was CNN or MSNBC had r reporting that said that advisors were informing Trump that he better prepare for a loss. And I thought to myself, he needed advisors for that? <laughs> Doesn't he watch fucking television at all? Yeah, okay. he's pissed off at Fox. <laughs> let's, here, here's an interesting thing to talk about. Let, let's talk about the various ways in which Trump blew this whole election himself. First of all, the fact that all the votes that are coming in, 90% of the votes that are coming in that were by uh, mail-in, are yeah. all for Biden. Now, why is that? Well, because Trump told everybody not to mail in their ballots to go in and do them in person. So yeah. those first votes that come out, he, do you remember that I think it was in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania? He had 600,000 votes. Yeah. In the lead. Yeah. And now he's, of course, the 30... Thousand to the thirty thousand behind now. Yeah, so and growing, uh, and that was all because he made tactical mistake number one, telling them not to mail in their ballots. Well, his other mistake was by bad mouthing John McCain. That's why he lost yep. Arizona. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep, 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 yep. That's why I think uh, well, what this were you is going to be what, a great what, McCain's revenge. What did yeah. you say? What did you say? Uh, uh, Charlie was his second mistake. I, I, He's bad mouthing John McCain. Oh well, that I was going to say that's number two because in uh, in Arizona, which traditionally wouldn't go uh, blue, no. uh, they don't want to vote for Trump because of how they treated their boy John McCain. Yeah, and then when Cindy McCain gets out there and says, "Don't vote for Trump," mm -hmm. come on, that's like a voice from the grave telling you not to. Yeah. Um, uh, then uh, let's see here. Well, oh yes. Then he thinks. You see, some of the ballots wow, are still outstanding. Our, what, is our after all? what was that? <laughs> What's that? That's me trying to oh. trying to live stream the uh, MBC, MSNBC in case something happens. Yeah. Well, just look at it. Don't, I, I turned it down. Don't put the audio <laughs> on. Uh, uh, the, the next mistake he made. Uh, he's planning on the fact that when these votes come in from the military, that they're all going to swing his way. What did he say about the military? Yeah. That ain't working. Mm -hmm. That one yeah. isn't working. I mean, he made so many tactical mistakes that are coming back to bite him in the ass right now. I mean, <laughs> and, the, and the biggest one was telling people to, you know, go vote. You know, don't don't mail them in. Don't trust the mails. By the way, the mails seem to have gotten all the, you know, uh, uh, envelopes in on time. Although, what was this thing tonight? The Supreme Court said in Philadelphia that they couldn't count any vote that didn't come in after eight o'clock on election day. Do you, anybody see that? I I, oh. I think they were just trying to segregate that portion of the votes in case something came up. They're just putting right. them into a box, so in case yeah. oh, something be, comes up, they're they're going to count them and count everything them, else. Yeah. They're going to if count something them. comes up, they'll know where to go for them. Oh, they'll count yeah. them, but then they'll put them in this pile. Yes, they yeah. haven't counted them. They are not in the total. They're no, not they're in they're the just gonna yet, no. they're just gonna say, okay, these are the ones that came in after, and we'll yeah. decide what we're going to do with them, and then well, they'll get counted. Yeah, but they're going to decide what to do. At last. Them. Uh, okay, well, yeah. I would like to mail them yeah. over to Trump's house. <laughs> it won't be necessary because the ones that they have already 
Yeah. That's the thing. Is it's probably not going to be necessary. The, yeah, he's just going to go ahead and count them and the, yeah, just Biden, put a bigger the, nail in the coffin. In That's most all. of these states, the votes that have come in for Biden have all been mail-ins. The majority mail-in. of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When the of the mail-ins, ninety percent are Biden. Yep. Ninety percent. Mm-hmm. So when you it's hear, very, oh, well, they still got like a hundred thousand more mail-ins over here. You can figure that maybe ninety thousand of those are going to be for Biden. Georgia was amazing. Yeah, Georgia was amazing, <laughs> and maybe they called having that runoff a little too early because he's starting to build up a sufficient lead now. Oh, he is. Well, that he's was, that was pretty. Yeah, it I mean, was predicted, and 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 Trump predicted it himself. He he, he said it himself. What? I what mean, is- that that was going to be this this late. Uh, Mark Meadows has COVID now. I just saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> they, you know that they all predicted that because the co- because of COVID, people were going to mail it in, and most of them were going to be Democrats. And even Trump said so himself mm-hmm. that that was going to be the big conspiracy. Wow! Yeah. But it wasn't a conspiracy; it was a reality. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But he 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 was trying to dissuade mail in voting and saying that's going to be terrible and it's going to be horrible. Sure. Sure. And I saw it at the polls. I mean, that, that, like I said, it, yeah, it got into people's heads all over the place and they were constantly asking them those questions. I, you know, I had people standing, pulling me off to the corner and just throwing these scenarios left and right. What if I did this and I put it in here and I go down there and do this and what if, what if, what if all day long that day, it was crazy. Yeah. And I said, just don't watch the news lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Trump himself and Melania and all of them mailed in their, yeah, their votes. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. enough. Uh, it was amazing, you know, because you know, I was I was amazed at how much it affected it affected people, and it did, it did. Whether I'll it was always, Republican or Democrat, it, it affected a lot of people. Yeah. Just I'll always remember. County. I'll always re- remember this election with Trump saying, "Stop the count." keep the votes coming you know it was yeah, like depending yeah. on which state well I, you know i think <laughs> or stop the vote at two I think o'clock right in the now morning. we should stop yeah. the vote everywhere i think that'd be fine then we get it by yeah. the winner yeah. yeah yeah i mean um he's not he's not he is the textbook definition of sore loser yeah you know i mean <clears throat> this is a time when somebody has to, if he wants to leave with dignity, yeah, goes through the motions. You know, hey, if I ran for president for the second time and people decided, fuck you, I don't, we don't want you, we don't like you, you're, you're not our idea of a good time. Um, um, I would hate to say uh, I concede, but you do it. You know, be best, huh? Be best. Be, 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 be best. best. You don't talk be so best. much. You don't talk so much shit through your your campaign that you have to regret saying goodbye. You know. Well, yeah, and and uh, you should say goodbye and say it nicely and uh, uh, wish the next president uh, all the all the uh, positive things you can. Look at Kevin. He's just going no, <laughs> no. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna oh, happen. Not. It's not going to happen. Listen, not in his DNA. People, even the TV people are saying. I think it was John Meacham who was saying tonight. He's just, he's not showing up for the inauguration. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't think that's ever happened in the history of the United States. No, it's happened before. I saw somebody on Facebook who pointed out, you know, three or four times in the past it happened. But did, why did it happen? Did it happen because the guy was bitter? Or did it happen because there was something else going on and it was impossible for that person to get there? I think it was contentious election. Yeah. That's well, there, what he made it sound like. What was that one that was terrible, the most horrible election probably in the United States history in which they didn't settle it till March, I think? And it was Tyler and... Yeah, it was in 18... 18- yeah. Well, Nixon, did Nixon show up for the inauguration? Probably not, right? <laughs> no, he didn't, but well, he resigned. 
Well, yeah, but he couldn't. He no, wasn't. he did not show up for the <laughs> right. No, but he wasn't. He wasn't. No, but he wasn't the ex president. Ford right. was. Yeah, he was and Ford God. did. Well, Ford, yeah, that's true. It was, Ford it was did God, show up. Yeah. Ford did show up. You know. Well, <laughs> Alex, this is going to happen to you someday what? when you're replaced as president of Antifa. Mm. <laughs> well, my terms. Yeah, running. but I think Alex will show up. Yeah, he will. You'll show up to the inauguration. Well, of course, yeah, because yeah. I want to wish you all the best. That's right. <laughs> in your new position, Robert. With fire. <laughs> yeah, prone. I love how these people just, you know, Antifa. I was even driving cool. home tonight on, on the 101, and, and Brian would know this this overpass just before Cochrane Road on 101. The, oh, yeah. the traffic was backed up for <clears throat> miles. Mm -hmm. And as I got closer and closer, I went, oh, my God. And I look up on the overpass, and they're just covered with Trump people and their flags oh. and all this crap. And I'm going, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? <laughs> and they're out there, yeah, Trump, Trump. And, of course, I've got a, uh, an F-250 pickup truck with a, with a PA system on it. And I got right under them, and I clicked on the PA system. And I said, give it up, losers. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was that, Kevin? That was the the overpass going no southbound. Today, Mor Morgan Hill, Cochrane. Today, yeah, today. Oh, just really? A hours, just a couple hours ago. And how yeah, did we, they? How did they go there for? How did they react to you? Well, I don't know because I got right underneath them, so they couldn't throw nothing at me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I blasted <laughs> it out there. And then uh, two people next to me were going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we go there Sundays at Hobby Lobby for a coffee and cars thing. Yeah. Oh, Every okay. Sunday morning. Yeah. Every Sunday? Yep. Hobby Lobby. Well, it's funny. Oh, the, Trump people, the, Trump yeah. the Trump people in the Trump people in I'll have a car one of these the weekends. Trump people in Arizona were out in front yelling. Something like uh, speed up the vote, speed up the vote. Yeah. We want the vote now. And then you cut to, I think it was Pennsylvania, where the Trump protesters were yelling, shut it down, shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, don't they have somebody who coordinates this whole yeah, no. thing? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, and they did it right. They just, whichever way it's going according to Trump, that's what you say. Yeah. If you need votes, keep counting. If you don't need votes, shut it down. Well, listen, if you don't count, there aren't any votes. Wait a minute. Yeah, just like no COVID. No you know, COVID. No test, no COVID. Yeah. Uh, it, it uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's sad that it has to come to this. You know, I mean. It really is. Uh, it really and is. I'll tell you what grieves me greatly, and a lot of people have been writing about this, is that to begin with, Biden got the largest amount of votes any presidential candidate has gotten in the history of the United yep. States. Yep. As well, there should be. More people should vote than voted. Yep. Uh, but uh, also, we have a larger population and all of that. So it came to that, which <laughs> makes, I think, Trump the second largest vote getter. Yeah, he passed Obama. Yeah. In, yeah, the, so, in the history. So let me, let me say this. This is an accomplishment that Donald Trump has made. He got people to vote. That I is agree. his only accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what he did. Yeah. yeah. I he got people to vote. Despite himself. Yes. Despite himself, no. yes. <laughs> Thank you, no. but the Thank thing, you, Donald Trump. The thing that gets me is that, and what de depresses me, and it was depressing a lot of other people, too, is, is that that many people voted for Donald yes. Trump. I mean, when Half you consider when you consider what they were voting for, a, a person yeah. who was highly immoral, if you talk about Christian values, yeah. um, uh, it, it, who 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 allowed the coronavirus to run wild, uh, you know, who caused a large amount of unemployment in this country because of his yeah. not take not administering to the coronavirus i mean all these things plus his complete indifference towards the black lives matter thing and and uh, racial disparity in this country uh that there were that many people who were voting for that it's half the country i mean, I mean he shouldn't have gotten two votes for crying out loud 
He had he, he was terrible. He was just terrible. They yep. had a statistic somewhere that I heard this weekend that said that uh, Trump drew votes from 35% of Muslim men. And I thought, don't these people own television sets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, there were, there were a lot of, uh, Charlie, you might want to answer this. There were a lot of black males. I who keep voted. hearing that. I don't know who they were, but supposedly he, he got a lot of black voters. Yeah. Why? Heavy and, Latino, and, too. And Latino. But don't they know that they're very close to being Mexican? Cuban. The Cubans <laughs> did. Not the Mexicans so much, but it was the Cubans. Yeah, because yes. yeah. Cubans hear the word socialism, and yeah. that's that. Mm. Yes, you're right. They, they are familiar with fascism, though. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They, they, haven't, they haven't gotten to that chapter of the book. But if you use fascism, Spanish, it changes. If you use fascism, you don't get Jews <laughs> to vote for you, so... Yes, Richard, did you have your hand up? No. Oh, I thought you did. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, uh, John Larkin. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? What are you thinking? Oh, my head. My huh? head is itchy. My head is oh, itchy. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm at a point where it's not stinging anymore, but it's <clears throat> itching like a motherfucker, and it's all crusted up, you know? Oh, great. Dried oh, up. Okay. The shingles. Oh. It's like a motherfucker. It, went, it lasted exactly one month for me. Exactly. What, uh, what the shingles? Month. Yeah, yeah, the shingles. But didn't you go get shingle stuff? To take care. I have of no it? medicine. Oh, now you got to wait they, six months. They they got me on some really strong stuff that's uh, they, they killed it off pretty quick. So I'm glad about that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was it was not fun. It was painful. No, well, no. I remember when I got it on my face. But I but the doctor gave me a medicine to take, and it, it pretty well went away within about 24 hours. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, it started clearing up within 24 hours, but the pain went away. The pain, I remember, was not fun. It was terrible. It was, yeah. Thank Especially you, folks, point, for joining us this evening. We're discussing shingles, in case you just joined us. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, when I first heard, heard, the guy said, oh, you have, the doctor said, you have shingles. And I'd always heard about shingles. Mm -hmm. But I figured that was something you got in your ass. Yeah. It, doesn't it sound like something that it, yeah. it happens in your ass? Oh, you've got the shingles. Oh, really? That's hemorrhoids. Is that anything like dingleberries? Dingle you know? <laughs> I got a case of aluminum siding, actually. You got a, of aluminum siding? Yeah, not shingles. I'm not shingles. Oh, I see. <laughs> but I'm boom. Okay. But I'm, right. I'm boom. Yeah, I, I think um, Trump unleashed something in this country that it's really confusing, you know, it, uh, but it's powerful that, that I keep on reading that uh, if, if Trump wasn't such an incompetent fascist dictator, you know, the next time around we get someone like Trump, like maybe, you know, two, four years from now, yeah, it was smart, somebody man. a little bit more competent. They're talking about uh, what's that dude on uh, Fox? Uh, Hannity. Hannity. Oh, the other guy, the Tucker Carlson. Tucker. Yeah. Tucker Carlson. They're, they're going to try to draft him to be the next uh, the next uh, fewer, many fewer. Well, you know something? What worries me is that, yeah, isn't it what, you know, it was wonderful when we when we elected Obama and we could say, hey, we voted for a black person. We made a black person president of the United States. And then we did it twice. And we felt, we felt pretty good about ourselves. We felt that maybe this country had turned a corner in its morality. And then here comes Trump, and he's president. And it, it polar opposite of everything that Obama represented. Backlash. Yeah. So what's to say that four years from now, you know, Biden probably will not want to run again. Maybe he'll let Kamala Harris run or somebody else will run. I think it should be Cuomo because I think he really knows how to win an election. Uh, and, um, uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, I, I think it's very possible they'll vote for the same kind of person again. It's just got to be better packaged, you know, and, and more devious. The trouble with Trump was he wasn't devious, you know, he didn't ever let you question what he was about. If I have yeah. to say one thing about him, 
what you saw was what you got. Yep. Yep. You know. Well, that's the scary part is if you get yeah. somebody in there that is devious, that they might get away with it, and they might have somebody that could really fuck things up. Yeah. 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 Quietly. Yes, Richard. Ooh. What if he cranks up a machine? Like I understood that his. I don't know if this is true, but his his family is investing in OAN, mm -hmm. and he goes on OAN and runs that, and and you know puts forth the, all these conspiracy things, and then runs somebody named Trump uh, for 2024, like Ivanka or Don Jr. or uh, they they're ambitious. Well, uh, you know, I oh, mean, uh, Don oh. Jr. has been in there in in our face for the last couple. Look at Kevin of days. throw his head back. <laughs> put, put Eric in there. Mm. Oh, well, Eric's, Eric, you know, Eric, no, he'll get too much votes. Eric's the, yeah. just like me. Eric's the spe, Eric's the special child. I'm beginning I'm anxious to, to go to Home Depot and see Jared Kushner telling me "Welcome to Home Depot." <laughs> <laughs> What else is that guy qualified for? Yeah. To be an ass kisser? Well, you know, actually I'm, he belongs at Subway. I think yeah, you're I, right. I, I think that uh, um, Trump is going to, when he gets out, when he's through being president, we're going to get to see exactly how broke he is. Yep. Yeah. Because Deutsche Bank wants to exit the relationship with him because they can't, you know, they, they, they don't like the negative publicity about it. About, yeah, he's, about he's what? got news. They might just have to write off the three hundred million. You, you know, you know what his who, most valuable who, asset is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have to write off what three hundred million for what? That he owes the, Deutsche Bank. That he owes well, Deutsche, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank. Yeah. It's yeah. all personally guaranteed too, yeah. so he can't walk away from it. But his most valuable asset <laughs> is the thirty percent that he owns in the Bank of America building here in the city. It's worth just that thirty percent of that building is worth five hundred and fifty million. And uh, Trump Tower is only worth about two hundred million. Yeah, but the problem is the the part that he owns is leveraged, and so yeah, yeah, that's you know what I mean. Like even if he were to try to sell it, he'd have to pay off his creditors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it really doesn't have a substantial value to him. It's yeah. a little like, you know, if I go out and buy a million dollar home and I'm mortgaged out the ass, I don't I don't own a million dollars, you know. Right, right. And you don't own your ass. Yeah, right. Barely. They will in your ass. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I just think that uh, um, uh, he is going to have lots of money problems when he gets out. You know, yeah. he absolutely being president has been a safe zone for, for him. It has prevented him from being arrested on any, uh, all kinds of. And he things. made a fortune off of it too. Yeah. Well, I don't know that he made a fortune. How do you figure he made a fortune? Well, for all the money he made off the hotel from foreign government, yeah. you know, the nationals coming in there, you know, at that at the place on California Avenue, he rents um, like a like a huge office space for half a million bucks a year to the uh, the sovereign fund of Qatar, you know, that country. Yeah, they've yeah. never even gone in there. They spent like, you know, like a million dollars fixing it up. But they've ne they've never gone in there. It's just empty. I mean, it's it's all fancy with fancy furniture, but nobody ever goes in there. And and the reason he did that was remember uh, when he first came in, and there was that big uh, the the Arabs were the Arabs and the uh, Emiratis were uh, accusing the Qatar of being uh, supporting uh, you know terrorism and all this shit. Right. And and so Trump basically came in there, and that's when they moved in. Was right after that. So they said, look, you know, you're going to rent that, rent some property and I'll take the, the Arabs off your back. You know, yeah. that's what it was. It was a quid pro quo. See, that's why I, I have a completely different take on what he'll do when he loses from here until January. I think a lot of people are really concerned and maybe rightfully so about all the things he may do. I don't really think he's he gives a shit about any of that, I think what he'll do is he'll sit and think, okay, how well can I fill my pockets between yeah. now and January? Yeah, yeah. If it's getting kickbacks on contracts, if it's this, it's that. You know, like people are worried, well, he could hurt where it comes to healthcare. I honestly don't think in my heart that he gives a rat's ass about that. Exactly. I think he probably never did. It was yeah. always about himself. 
Mm-hmm. I think yeah. you're right. I think he's he's thinking he's thinking corporate wise, yeah. and he's losing his job, so he's going to pad his pockets and get himself ready to 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 ride off into the sunset. You're yeah. right, Charlie. He's thinking yeah. corporate wise. Yeah, he also he he he's been charging every secret the government for every secret service agent yes. at his hotel six hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Each. Well, you heard about the story about when the Japanese premier came to Mar-a-Lago and he hosted yeah. him there. Yeah. Uh, that was all charged, of course, to you and I, uh, the United <laughs> States citizens, yeah. and uh, we were being charged. Ready for this? Three dollars for a glass of water. Yep. What? And, and see, G- anything he can't does- say water comped. You know? Yeah. Anything he does government-wise forces him to be out in front of the public. And to be frank, I think this loss is going to be such a bloody embarrassment to him that he may lay low. You may not even see too much of him. I don't even know that he'll stay in the White House. You know, like he may book. Um, I just can't for the life of me picture that he's going to do anything government-wise because... In my heart, I don't think he ever gave a rat's ass about that. Mm-hmm. And less now than ever before, because he's not trying to impress in order to get reelected. I think he'll go to Florida he's and be a lame duck. He's, gonna, again. he's not going to be a lame duck. He'll be a lame goose. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's he's my gonna split the, I think he's going to split the country because uh, he, cause, cause of that, uh, that southern district of new york case new york right yeah uh R- yeah richard They'll go to jail to, on that richard were you trying to say something oh it's interesting he'll split the country mm, i don't think so i think his base is here as long as he's distracted by this election thing mm. there's uh, the less damage he can do from here on but i think he still needs the republican apparatus for my idea that he wants to promote a trump in 2024 because he thinks that there's still an avenue there for the for the family. I think Republicans and he are could, to and he could uh, he could he could uh, uh, pardon X number of individuals <clears throat> yeah. who are um, you know. Well, we're going to see the pardoning here. friendly friendlies to him. Has he pardoned all the people that got jailed? Manafort does not yet. What? I don't think he pardoned Manafort yet. Hasn't uh, Manafort hasn't been pardoned? Um, he better pardon DeJoy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, I, I think the Republicans are going to start bailing on him, though. Yeah, me too. It himself. Oh, it's going to be like, they're going to be like, uh, they're going to be like Judas. I mean, they're all going to, yeah. uh, they're all going to deny yeah. him three times. You know? so I, I don't think how he's going to stay in the Republican Party if everyone says bailing on him and says we don't want that insane thing again. Go and on. Let's face it. A lot of Republicans kept their mouth shut. Because mm-hmm. they got what they wanted. They yeah. knew he was intolerable. They yep. knew he was, you know, like a horse's ass. So now that they're out of him, do they really want to invite that back? I just don't think so. Second of all, he lost this one, and he should have lost the last one. So his popularity is not what he cranks it up to be. Yeah. And, and let's face it. And that's I what mean- pisses me off. You know, I don't care what anybody, what he, what tr- Trump says or anybody says, uh, the Russians fixed that election. There was no mm-hmm. question about it. I mean, I'm watching this thing they did on Showtime called the Comey Rule, in which oh, they're yeah. they're they're talking about you know all the ties that he's that the Trump people. He said there wasn't a single person on Trump's campaign committee who hadn't had business ties to the Soviets, you know, yeah. and to the oligarchs. Oh, yeah. And uh, that election was fixed. There's no question about it. I don't think they fixed it this time because I don't think they were really interested in fixing it. They figured that the damage that they did the last time had a residual effect on this one, you know, and that, that they had destroyed America's soul, basically. And, they, and they're right. You know, America is, I don't care what happens with Biden coming in, America is a completely split country. Yep. You know, um, and uh, I, I hope Biden is nice enough that he can manage to bring 
a little bit of it back together. But I think that it's been permanently damaged. And I think the Soviets got exactly what they wanted. By the way, did you hear Putin's got, uh, what is it? Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Mm. And, wow. Really? wow. Yeah. Wow. And his family wants him to quit. Oh, my crocodile tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my ass bleeds for him. <laughs> well, you know, at least uh, he'll be like one of our favorite actors, Michael J. Fox. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, maybe he'll become lovable. Um, I, it, no, he supposedly has that. Uh, and also, uh, Al Roker has prostate cancer. Yeah. 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 Oh. And they're removing his Poor prostate. Guy. They didn't remove mine, but they remo they're going to remove his. They say the radiation wouldn't do it for him. So, wow. You know, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we know people who call this program from time to time who have no prostate any longer. And it, it, you know, if that saves your life, it saves your life. You know? Yep. You guys talk about Sean Connery? Uh, what about him? He died. Oh, how many weeks ago? Yeah. Was that? Over a week ago. ago I think yeah, the same day as Ronnie. Fun, right? <laughs> it was the same day as Ronnie. So it had to be last uh, Friday? Friday. I thought it was just like a couple days ago. No. No, no. no it, was last, it was over. It was before, yeah. No. Last Friday. Yeah. Well, he no, was a good actor. I thought. Delirium. What? You... I thought he was a good actor. I liked him. No, I liked him too. Oh, I thought, yeah, me too. I thought he was terrific. I, he was. I thought he was smart to get out of the uh, the James Bond gig, you know. I mean, because he could have milked that forever. Well, he milked yeah. he milked it for seven pictures for crying. Well, he did right. enough. <laughs> yeah, you know. And he did seven. Was I, it think did, I think he it's, did. It's, yeah. If you count uh, "Never Say Never Again," yeah. Yeah, because he came oh. back for that. Yeah. He was Bond, though. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. he established oh, well, who Bond. Yeah, he established yeah. who Bond was, but you know something? I'll tell you something. You ask people, who's your favorite Bond? And depending on their age, uh, different people. Like, I you talk to a young person whatever, today, yeah. talk to a younger person today, somebody in his 40s, and you go, uh, I think Sean Connery was through, and they go, yeah, I never saw many of his films. Yeah. You know, but I like Roger Moore. Roger Moore was terrific. Yeah. I mm -hmm. said, Roger Moore sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I got in a pissing contest the other day. I guess it wasn't the other day. It was Halloween. Some one of my friends put up, um, of all the movies you've seen, who was your favorite Count Dracula? And I got in trouble because I responded, Rudy Giuliani. That's a good eight. Yeah, he... Um, um, it wasn't the, too modern. The, 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 what happened was, I used my old friend Dana Gould and I used to talk about. We used to love Bond, so, and we had all the Bond trivia and everything. Uh, I mean, we could name every Bond theme song and who sang it. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but he and I, we actually felt that one of the best Bonds ever, post Connery, was the guy. What was his name? Who did? Uh, uh, Lazenberry? Lazen, Lazenberg. yeah. La, uh, La, Lazenberg or something? Wait, stop, stop it. I'll, I'll get it if you just... Uh, Lazenby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we thought that Lazenby, actually, that picture was maybe one of the best Bond pictures ever because it yeah. was the mo closest to a Bond book. Yeah. And if you yeah. remember, in that picture, he gets married to Diana Rigg, who yeah. at that yeah. age was a fox, not like we remember on Game of Thrones. Um, he marries uh, Diana Rigg, and then she gets murdered at the end. Okay. You know, and it's a very, it's a very special picture. And we always, we always held that one out, saying, you know, after the Bond pictures, that was probably one of the best pictures. In fact, even with the Bond pictures, we went, well, it, Goldfinger, okay, and then probably uh, th that picture, uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two I remember about reading the books yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, of course. Two things about James Bond. And, and when I was a kid, James, I, I, to this day, am a voracious reader, a book or two a week. And I have to owe it all to Ian Fleming and James Bond. That's mm -hmm. where I started. 
Yeah. It made me a reader. The other thing that's sort of a trivia question favorite of mine mm-hmm. is that Ian Fleming, for all the work he did with James Bond, also wrote Chitty Chitty, Chitty Bang, Bang Bang. Bang Bang. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Wrote a great kid's book. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the fact is that, uh, that uh, this may be something I've never probably talked that much about. Uh, for a short time in my life, I was James Bond. Whoa. Well, at KILT in Houston, Texas. Down in Texas? Yeah. Yes. yes. That's right. Oh. That's right. I've heard that. With a, I did it with a British accent. Time's gone by. Him. And uh, um, it, was, it, was, it did very well as a show. It was a big hit. Uh, and yeah. I was James Bond. Uh, and uh, I had to everywhere I went. I had to speak with a British accent. Uh, the deal I have with the radio station was you can't let anybody know you're not British. Wow. So even my friends who I made there, when I'd be with them, I have to talk with this British accent. Let's hear that. You know something? I've tried to do it, and I have a hard time doing it because it, it, I, I just don't think I can do it any longer. You know, because I did it very subtly. There you go. Yeah, it, it's kind not of bad. Fair, you know. Well, I say, what I did is I didn't do I didn't do it as a thick accent, you know, because then you could tell maybe I was a phony. But if I did it very subtly like this, then people would believe it. Gee, I'm doing it again. By God, I'm doing it. There you uh, go. You sound so smart. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, but, but, no, intelligent. But, but what happened was I decided that this gig was not going to last forever because uh, James Bond was not going to be the hit he was when they first decided to do this. Ah. And, you know, I better hedge my bets on this. So I slowly on the air started losing my accent. Just slowly, by measures. <laughs> and, and finally, um, Everybody. This, uh, I got rid of it completely and people still in, this was in Houston, Texas, still thought I had a British accent. Wow. You know, so that reminds me a friend of mine once taught me how to say the name Michael Caine, the actor Michael Caine. Mm-hmm. The way to do it is to say the words my cocaine. My, my cocaine. My cocaine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my cocaine. Yeah, my you're cocaine. Right. You're right. Well, they, I always used to say there were certain words you could use to imitate. Where was it legal now? Like, is that Colorado? Like, I'll tell everybody. Oh, God. Tell everybody right now how you can do an impression of Boris Karloff. Right? It's one word. Antipasto. Antipasto. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's yeah. it. Antipasto. 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 <laughs> Somebody yeah. taught me to do Gary Cooper. All you got to do is say, forget it. He's dead. <laughs> well, here, here's one for you. Jerry Lewis, you can do with any number of words, mm. but they're all pharmaceuticals. Lady. Oh, yeah. No, here we go. Riboflavin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, let me see here. Any other pills that I have here that I uh, can do that with? Yeah. That's good. Don't yeah, worry yeah, but that's, that's the Jerry Lewis, best Jerry Lewis word is riboflavin. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember some of the other drugs too. You know, you can pretty well take any drug, and it's a Jerry Lewis word. Uh, <laughs> and they're the imitations—not the imitations, but the the uh, impressions that people did of actors and actresses, where they say things that the actor actor never, never actually said. said uh, right? Uh, Bogart never said, "Play it again, Sam." Yeah. Or who- yeah. Who stole the strawberries? Well, the, 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 wait a minute. No, that was in Did the K Mutiny. That? Yeah. that was in the K Mutiny. But he never said, play it again, Sam. No, what he said play was, it. Play, play it, it, Sam. Play it, right. Play, uh, you played it for her. You right. played it for her, you can play it for me. Right. Play right. it, Sam. And Jody, Jody, Jody. Yeah. I don't know Jody. if he ever said that. Uh, he, no, uh, uh, Cary Grant never said, Judy, Judy, Judy. Right. Yeah, I love you, Ma. He never said that ever yeah. in a movie right. anywhere. So a lot of times the impressions people do are based on on words and so on that they never they never <laughs> said in a film. But but Judy 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 sounds, you know, pretty. Yeah, good. it sounds like he he would say that. Well, how would we do an impression of Donald Trump? 
<laughs> God. I'm hearing. Huh? Just do this, yeah. What was with that? I don't know. Yeah. Was he a walrus? What was yeah. he? What is <laughs> it? Yeah. He's not this, a tiger. Um, he's like, yeah. You know. Just, just so you know. Just so just, you know. Just so you know. <laughs> it's going away. But I talk <laughs> like this, but I'm half Italian, so I'm allowed to. You know. Yeah. You're I'm half completely uh, Italian. I can't like talk this. without them. Like I know. <laughs> So, so uh, we, we tried that. We tried that with my wife to talk. So have three, you been watching any of this gazorch? Three minutes without using her hands. It don't happen. Brian, don't you been happen. watching any of this gazorchness on television today? And what's going on? Yeah, I watched Philadelphia. I mean Pennsylvania re report three votes at a time. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it was I, I, Brian? I don't know if you watched it, but it was like watching paint dry. And now the new big star in television. Is Steve Kornacki. Oh, yeah. This guy who wears the worst colored pants you've ever seen in your life. And he supposedly has like five or six pair of them because, you know, he has to change them. And he never sleeps. He never sleeps. He's there. I saw him the other night at two o'clock in the morning. When I woke up, he was there at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And he's got his map and he's yeah. going all over the place. But he's getting a little loopy now if you watch him. Yeah. Now yeah. he's really like going Don in. King on CNN he, is at least as good. Yeah, but he's going into yeah. minutia now. You Hold know. up sleeves. Yeah. He, you know that that whoever's building those those big those big TVs with all the stuff, yeah. man, they should promote the heck out of it because that thing's been going 24-7 for four days now. Yeah, yeah. It, wor it works really well. Right. But the thing is, Very well. the thing is that Kornacki, who I, I really never liked, I kind of felt he was too dweebish, you know, uh, uh, he's found his place. And I have to admit that when in the midst of it all, when he would like hone in on the county and say, now here's where he's going to get the votes from, and the majority of 90% are coming by, by mail and so on, uh, I, I got to really appreciate him because he was really drilling down into it so in a way that we could all understand. Yeah. So He loves it. You could he see does know the shit. He does it. know his shit. Yes, and I, he's, he's becoming a star. I mean, he's, yeah. he's gonna, he better get a big raise over there at MSNBC. <laughs> And a new pair of pants. And a new pair of pants. <laughs> but the, oh. the first, the first day, the first couple of days of the counties was too much. When they would start doing the counties in the first day, it's like, who cares? Who cares? Too much. But now it's really important. Yeah. Well, I mean, he makes you understand how how the voting works in yeah. a given state, uh, and how to pay attention to it, and how to figure out what's happening. And and uh, one of the big things was why they weren't necessarily yep. calling it for him. Because, yeah. you know, Fox has called Arizona for Biden for the last yeah, or since Tuesday night. Tuesday yep. night he called, they called it. And yep. In fact, so much so that uh, Trump called Rupert Murdoch and, and said, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing this? And, and Murdoch basically told him to blow it out his ass. Yeah. You know, uh, he said, because that's the way we do it. But they called uh, Arizona days ago, and and MSNBC right. has yet to call Arizona. Oh, right. You know? Yeah, at the gym, at the gym, there's a uh, uh, Fox and uh, CNN. Yeah, and they're off by that that number, and and Alaska too. They give them Alaska too, so they had like yeah. to a two fourteen, and then CNN had two thirteen. And right. Associated no. Press, Associated Press, has given Arizona to Biden. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so, I mean, it, it, everybody has their different way of coming to this. And I'm, I think over at MSNBC, they're hoping that Biden doesn't get Arizona so they can go, see, CNN was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, uh, but, but, yeah, but, I mean, you know, if, if, uh, if he wins Arizona, he wins Nevada, and we're still waiting on Pennsylvania, we don't have to wait on Pennsylvania. Can I, I think that would have been the biggest shock. Huh? I think that's been the biggest shock for me. I, I didn't think Pennsylvania was going to come back that strong. Well, they, so many more votes. They you know? say that there are people who honestly feel that there's a good shot that he'll get over a hundred thousand in Pennsylvania yeah. when it's all yeah. over. Yeah, he'll be he'll win by more than that. Yeah. 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 So what? yeah. Yeah. And see, when all is said and done, this will not have been a close election. Exactly. If, Same number. If if Biden finishes at 306 and wins the popular vote by five or six million, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Historically, this was a one-sided election. Yep. What gives the illusion that it was close is that it lasted so goddamn long. Yep. But it really wasn't a tight election. There have been many tighter. It's just that the, the votes were coming from different directions. Yes. And, it's, and you know, uh, again, I say I, I was a stupid one because I remember in the very beginning, what were we saying? We're saying, don't believe the first night. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it, it, you got to wait for the other votes to come in. Uh, and yet I felt really depressed when I went to bed that night. Mm -hmm. And I think we all were. And yet... It, it, it was absolutely right. All of a sudden, you know, the mail-in votes started getting counted, and the whole thing changed. Well, what drove me nuts is how they, they kept saying so and so is in the lead. Yeah, you know, that's bullshit. This isn't a horse race. You mm -hmm. can get the first two hundred electoral votes and get the shit kicked out of you. It's yep. all a function of who reports and when. You know, it, it isn't a horse race. Right. Well, he was ahead all this while. And no, and no, he wasn't. It's just that that's how the count took place. Yep. By the way, I have to ask somebody a question here. Richard, what kind yeah. of microphone are you using there? Because it is so good. It's just the Apple um, headpiece. Really? Yeah. Wow, because you don't even have to put it up to your mouth. It just has a really good, good sound um, to it. I'm amazed. Yeah. Everybody, go out and get yourself an Apple earphone. Those are the cheap ones. I that want come you to tell me how you how you how you uh, highlight your face. What what kind of? Uh, oh well, here's how one, I, one day you'll turn me around. Here's how I don't highlight my how. face. Oh my one god! Tell me around and tell me, uh, me how to. Got Klieg light. Me, uh, the I have two lights here, which I turn off when I'm th right through with the show. What is That's that? An Apple. That's what? an Apple. Where? Apple. Where? Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, sound, value is not as good as the audio coming off of it is very, very good, you know. Super. Yeah. And he has a, such a soft voice. Yeah. That's been <laughs> since childhood. Like, uh, I just held my opinion back until I felt like I was ready to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so look, you know, I, I know uh, this is our Friday show, and I know I said this last night, but I probably <laughs> can say this with some assurance. Yeah. By next Tuesday, when we do the show again, we should have an answer. Nah. No, you don't think so, Richard? Nah. Nah? Oh, not happening. Yeah, well, you should call <laughs> us back then. In fact, call us back well, anyway. There, I think there'll be somebody to set to 270. Maybe somebody hasn't conceded yet. Yeah. Oh, well, no, that, that's the other thing. You know, he will not have conceded by then. That could be true. George, Georgia's too close. <laughs> yeah. Arizona maybe, maybe set. Nevada, they're still sleeping. Um, and by the Pennsylvania's way, Pennsylvania's way out. What it, about that? What contested. about that Hawaiian vote? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear Hawaiian? any votes coming out of Hawaii? It's like they didn't have an election over there. No. You know, uh, it's them. It's what? Them's. Well, th didn't they say that it was going to be a couple of days late? I mean. Don't they understand we have satellites and stuff like that? We can get returns pretty fast. It's on a boat. They yeah, called they it for the Biden back. as soon as what? the polls closed. They, they, they called it for Biden. No, I don't know. How did Hawaii go? Do you know? It went oh, Biden. Oh, they went Biden? Biden. Biden. Oh, okay. Well, no, I wouldn't. Somehow I, no, I would think No, it's Hawaii. Alaska. Somehow it's frozen. Well, yeah, yeah, Alaska. I don't know what they're doing up there. there. Well, Alaska's a, a red state, you know. They are one. But the... The the suburbs of Alaska are Democrat, and that's what's last yeah. to come in. That's oh, why wow. they're not calling it, oh. even though he's fifty four, seventy six thousand right. ahead, or whatever. Yeah, well, let's let look, let him get us, let him get Alaska. Okay, we'll give him yeah. Alaska. We're taking yeah. Pennsylvania. They he haven't have called Alaska. that Tennessee yet either. He can retire there. <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> let me uh, let me put on the theme song here. Jeez, Almighty, what a what a good little show tonight. Uh, Jeff, haven't heard much from you tonight, but that's okay. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, Charlie, <laughs> good talking to you. And Richard, will you please call again now that you, you're you used to doing again, you know? I'll yeah. try. Good seeing you, Alex. Yeah, please. Keep in good health. Call us again. Have call a great us. weekend, everybody. Yeah, Robert, thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Brian. I, can, night, I guess guys. she's asleep, right? No, it's Friday night. She's playing games. It's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
and, uh, uh, and it, it can't make f faces at the old man, I guess. Uh, yeah. and, and John Larkin, thank you so much. Uh, all of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back, okay? There we go. There they go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be a new citizen panel right after we're through here with Jack Bishop and the intersection, and he'll be using Skype, and you call Skype using GabNet Live. As the, uh, as the phone number or address or Skype number or whatever. Anyway, uh, have a nice weekend, everybody. We'll see you again. Uh, we're going to see you Monday at 4 o'clock. We do our little 4 o'clock thing on Monday for the fun of it because we enjoy it. And then we'll be back again on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, what time? Oh, you know it. We'll be back here at uh, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her. And by the way, please be safe out there and wear a mask. Okay? Good night, everybody.